So the reason why the World Bank Group is putting so much focus on the landscape approach is that we believe that, um, well, first of all, people live in a landscape. They don't just live in a forest or just live on a farm. Um, and, but we believe that now um, the need to build resilience into the landscape, um, the need to increase agricultural yields, the need to maintain our forests as carbon sinks, um, the need to feed 9 billion people and achieve food security, and the need to uh, take carbon out of the atmosphere uh, through agricultural and land use as well as just forestry means that all of this has to be managed in the same in the, in the same in the same landscape uh, and I think what's really uh, important to us here in Warsaw is to see the forestry community and the agriculture community coming together you know at the policy level not just um, at the local level so I just think we have to be um, uh, a little bit more confident of what we know um, and a little bit more confident in ourselves as an integrated community because, you know, when I walk onto a farm, I'm not going to talk to the farmer about uh, reducing carbon emissions. I'm going to talk to the farmer about, um, about his yield. I'm going to talk to him about his income. I'm going to talk to him about his own food security. Oh, and then, you know, as a nice byproduct of that as well, we could potentially reduce emissions. Um, similarly, the people who negotiate here in the UNFCCC um, here in Warsaw are coming from environment ministries and they are not confident that there is a triple win that we can reduce yields uh, sorry increase yields um, increase income and reduce emissions they are unpersuaded of that I think they understand that agriculture has an important role to play in adaptation um, but uh, they haven't really embraced the, the triple win uh, this is something that is extremely disappointing uh, I think that it's in some ways outrageous um, that we haven't made the progress that we should have made in, in the work programme. But, the, you know, frankly, this is simply a challenge to all of us to engage with every single delegation and walk them through the evidence. Now, if in sight of the evidence they still don't believe that this is an issue that should be taken up by the UNFCCC in a meaningful way, then we have a different problem. But at, let's, at least let's take away any sense of scepticism that this is important and significant. So, I mean, the first thing is to make sure that the Substa meeting in June 2014 is not the same as the last three Substa meetings, where it's sort of been acknowledged and then people have said, well, we don't know enough or we don't have enough time, and then it's been kicked to the next one. So this sort of punting down the road has got to stop, which means that we've got a lot of work to do in the next six months to um, ask negotiators, what do you need in order to be able to advance the discussions? You know, what, what evidence, what data, who do you need to speak to, what do you need to understand in order to have a meaningful discussion? Um, and I think that's the first order of business. If we can have a successful subster, then the negotiation should flow. Meantime, outside of the negotiation track, we have two years to show in as many countries in the world, in as many landscapes in the world, that this is happening and that this is having positive impact and people are richer and people are more food secure and emissions are being reduced and the soil is of better quality. And every time that we can do that, then I think we, you know, we provide a different context for the negotiations. Forests are an incredibly important and dynamic part of the, of, the, of the discussions. I think understanding the relationships between forests and the rest of the landscape is very important. Here you also now see the starting of a discussion really about cities and the role that sub-national um, entities play in really moving forward in terms of emissions reduction. The relationship between forests in terms of how they work in watersheds and how they uh, reduce emissions and the cities that they often serve, I think is something that's only just being discovered here inside COP. So for me, forests are still an absolutely central part of this, but the interplay between forest and agriculture, forest and cities, forestry and all these other issues is just starting to be realised. People have comfort zones. Um, sectors have comfort zones, scientists have comfort zones, policy makers have comfort zones and we're very good at talking to the people that we know and you know it's taken a number of years and real leadership to get um, researchers from different disciplines working together at an interdisciplinary level in one unit of a forest or one unit of, of a farm 
Um, so getting that and making that systemic and not just episodic or anecdotal is hard and we know it. So as a community, can we just sort of put our shoulders back and say, okay, we understand that we have to be working in a multidisciplinary way across silos and that this is okay. I think it's important. And then the funding has to flow into an interdisciplinary approach. I mean, the funding is still siloed as well. And I have to take responsibility with others for making sure that the funding reinforces the kind of integration we want to see.